I'm here in Cars Park, a suburb in southern Sydney named after Scottish cabinet maker William Cars. William purchased 119 acres of the land in this area and built this house behind me and lived here until his death in 1878. The land remained in possession of the Cars family until 1917. The estate was passed to the Sydney Sailors' Home in 1921. However, not knowing what to do with it, they sold the estate to Cogger Council in 1923. And on Australia Day in 1924, the suburb of Cars Park was created and the land was auctioned off. A mural at the end of this street represents a photo taken on the day of the auction. On the same day, Cogger Council dedicated Cars Park for public use. Today, William's house is now known as Cars Cottage and serves as the home to the Cogra Historical Society Museum and now is open every Sunday for public use. Let's go take a look. As soon as you enter the museum, you are greeted with a smile from the president of the Cogra Historical Society. Behind her, a cabinet of brochures, books and pictures sets the scene for what is to come. As you walk down the hall, each room and each wall tells a story of the history of Cogra, filled with pictures and memories that highlight the past of this unique area. And as you enter the back room, there is a whole wall dedicated to Cars Bush Park and the history of the estate. Standing on the veranda at the front of Cars Cottage, this is what you see. The stunning 180 degree view of Cogra Bay through the trees. It's amazing that this house is still here. And what's even more amazing is so is William Cars. The tomb in which he's buried is down at the park and is heritage listed. It is also one of the only solitary tombs in the Sydney Basin and the land in which it stands is never to be sold. What I love most about this park is the community feeling, a place where you can enjoy a sunny day with the family. There is even Cars Park Cafe and Grill open seven days a week. Just a little bit of my own history, my dad used to bring my siblings and I here over the summer holidays and we would try and see who could swim around the pole and back in the ocean, but I was always too scared to go out that far. But probably my most vivid memory would have to be on Christmas Day 2005 when I was swimming and cut my foot on an oyster. However, it has never stopped me from coming back. I love this park and everything that it has to offer. And I hope that maybe one day I can even bring my own children here. It truly is a wonderful place to be. And I hope that more people are able to enjoy it and make memories here like I have. 